your POV. I had a really bad argument with my parents, like really bad. So basically, I was trying to pursue, persuade them to let me go out with my friends to a festival next week, but basically, they're so overprotective, they said no. I kept telling them that I was going to be safe and it would be only for two days, but no. It's way too dangerous. You could get lost or someone could kidnap me or I would get sick. They were thinking all kinds of excuses for me not letting me, for not, but for me not going. I snapped at them and they retaliated back and it was a constant arguing back and forth. In the end, I gave up. I gave up and ran out of the house. The sun was still up, so I went to the forest where I usually went. They can't boss me around forever. Why can't they just for once let me do something I want? I mumbled to myself as I kept swamp stepping. God, this is, I hate this. Because it doesn't make, because it says swamp, but stepping makes more sense. Stepping into the forest to my usual spot underneath the t- a tree next to a glistening lake full of life. I sat down and grabbed the book I had with me. But th- there was an unease feeling in a pit of my stomach that I was being watched. Bakugas POV. There she is again. I thought as I stared at the girl who comes here almost every day. I hide in a spot behind the bushes and watch her. Totally not stalking. She fascinates me. She never tries to hunt any animals or plant there. She sometimes draws in her sketchbook. She's so calm and collective compared to the shitty humans who venture here. I slowly crawled closer to her so I could try and smell her scent. But the bushes I was hiding in made some noise. But I didn't move a muscle, only watching what she would do next. No one's POV. The bushes rustled in the distance, not far from where Yin was sitting. That caught her attention from the book she was reading. She looked up and saw nothing, but felt like eyes were on her. What was that? She whispered to herself, but, but no answer came. She slowly stood up and... The bushes rustled again. When now she could definitely see something there, with her, with the piercing red eyes staring right back at her, she did not. The first thing she did was came to mind was to run. As she ran, she heard hard and thundering footsteps following her, but she heard more as well. She looked behind her to s- and. Behind her, and the sl- sight scared her. At least an eight foot tall creature with ash brown fur was following her with a nasty snarl on his face. On its face, she kept running with all she could until she tripped over something and fell to the ground. She turned around, and the wolf was there. It only, only it was crawling at a slow and frightening pace, looking straight at her. She tried to get up, but her ankle hurt. It was red and throbbing. As it approached her, she backed away until she corners herself into a tree. There was no escape, she thought, as she closed her eyes, bracing herself for death. Yet, it didn't come. Instead, She felt warm puffs of air in her face and fluffy fur next to her face. She opened her eyes and saw the wolf was sitting there and looking down at her. I don't know. Confusion, maybe? She didn't know what to do but look at the creature of the night before her. The wolf then licked her with a long tongue and started to rub itself on her. Yin had no idea what was happening right now, but she didn't want to piss it off, so she sat incredibly still and let it do its thing. As the wolf, or Bakugo, 
finished his quote-unquote marking, he howled in the distance more howls could be heard. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> she, fuck. She mumbled. The wolf snor- snorted at her. Like it was chuckling at her. Panic soared and bent down. He gently grabbed the human by the back of her clothes and started to take her somewhere else. Look, wherever you are, but I really need to get home now, she told it, a shaky voice as she struggled in its grip, but the response was a low growl, and she stopped struggling in fear what could happen if she carried on, as he kept walking deeper into the forest, yin and his jaws. Then it stopped, dropping the human on her butt and bent down to her level. She looked confused at it, but the wolf growled and pointed its snout to its back. It wants me to get on its back, she told herself. She did, as she was sort of told the wolf rose up again and started walking. Yen made sure to hold on gently to its soft fur because it was really long, sorry, really tall as they went deeper into there. She closed her eyes and and let sleep consume her. Bakugo looked back at the human and saw that she was asleep. He wagged his tail a little and looked forward again, taking her back into his den and to his pack. I don't know why, but I want to do the SpongeBob voices. <laughs> a few hours later, Yin's POV. I felt warm develop me, the fur all over me. The bed was really comfy. Wait a minute. A bed? I bolted up and saw that I was in a room. The walls had mud on them, like it was dug out, and all around me were blankets and and fur. I was in a makeshift bed. There was a table and a wooden chair, some books, clothes, and other stuff as well. I got out of the bed and saw that I was wearing something else. A large black t-shirt with some boxers? I went out of bed and saw my ankle was bandaged. Who did that? I went to explore the room to try and figure out where the hell I was. As I looked around, I didn't notice the door opening or or notice the man glaring at my back, nor noticed him walking forwards. I jumped as I felt arms wrap around me and my back coiled with oh god coiled with a warm chest. I started to squeal and scream in the grip, but it only tightened. Hey, hey. Oh my. <laughs> Am I? Yeah, I'm going to say it because I've said worse on this channel. Come your tits, mate. I'm not going to hurt you at all, the deep voice said behind me. I st- stopped squirming, but still shaking in fear. Something then moved between my legs, something furry and soft. I looked down and saw a fucking tail. Hmm. I slowly turned around and came face to face with a really handsome guy with wolf ears. Who are you? Where am I? I questioned him. I'm Kaski Bakugo and you're in my home. I brought you here. You're f- you fucking lost your memory or, or what? The guy re- looked really weird. Wait, are those his ears? He also had ash blonde hair and red eyes, like that wolf. How? No. What can't be possible? They're just myths. Are they? I don't know. No one's POV. As Yin was figuring out what the hell was going on, Bakugo only stared at her face as it was comforting, confronted with fear, confusion, and panic, but mostly confusion. He held her tighter and rested his chin on top of her head, his ears falling down and his tail wagging slightly, and he smelled her scent even better than where he hid. He buried his face in her hair. The train of thought stopped as Yin, the, uh, as the pr- pressure on her head, then the tail in between her legs was shaking like a dog when they were with its owners. He was warm. No, stop that, she thought. Um, what are you? Yin asked, 
Bakugo bent down to her ear and whispered in a deep voice, I think you already figured out that little human. Am I gonna get demonetized for saying tits? Probably be. Also, I think I did my hair, so now I look like Todoroki, but instead of red, it's white. Not white, um, pink. <laughs>